Hello, my name is Jo Stafford and I'm the co-founder and director of Print to the People. Print to the People is a social enterprise dedicated to the production and promotion of traditional printmaking processes. So we do screen printing, liner cut, letterpress, etching, monoprint, all those processes here in our facility in Norwich. Uh, so people can come and hire the space to make their own work and we also put on courses here in our studio and we also go out to places uh, like schools and museums and run workshops there and we also put on events and exhibitions throughout the year. Um, so in this video I'm going to talk a bit about how I got to where I am now. Uh, it's not meant as a map or a definitive guide as I believe, like especially in the creative industry, there's lots of ways of getting from A to B. But hopefully me talking about how I got to where I am will help anyone who's at some sort of life or career crossroads right now. So currently I earn a living from doing three things. I design and print my own work, which I sell online in my Etsy shop and also at events and exhibitions throughout the year. I teach printmaking, so I teach on our course programme here at Print to the People, and I also teach in the workshops and events uh, we do outside in schools and museums. And I also print things for other people, so artists and designers might get me to print their work because they don't have the time or space to do it themselves. Um, it's a bit of a juggle having income coming from three different areas, but I kind of like the way it means that each week is different and I'm doing something different each day. Um, so growing up, I was always quite creative. I was always doing things like making, uh, you know, birthday cards for family members or mixtapes for friends or coming up with like elaborate fancy dress costumes. Uh, I mean, at school, I was good at art in the technical sense. I knew how to do perspective and I was always coming up with good ideas for projects, but I wouldn't necessarily say I was the best in art in my class. When it came to picking A-levels, I knew I wanted to do art, but I also ended up doing English and Classical Civilization, which is a study of Greek art and architecture, and also biology. Um, they seemed like quite a random mix, but I really enjoyed reading, so English and Classical Civilization made sense, and I ended up uh, doing biology because my careers, uh, my careers advisor and my family felt I should do something academic to keep my options open. They kind of felt that art didn't really uh, count as a subject. Um, looking back on it, I wish I'd not done biology and just focused on the subjects I really enjoyed. But at the time, uh, careers like being an artist or an illustrator were quite alien. Like, you know, my fa no one in my family knew anyone who was doing those sorts of things. Um, and for example, my mum, when she was younger, she wanted to go to art school, but my grandpa persuaded her to go to sectarial college instead. I mean, don't get me wrong, my family have been really supportive of my career and everything that I've done along the way. Um, but at the time, I think they were just worried about what I would do with an art A-level and whether I'd be able to get a job um, after university. So I did my A-levels and I decided to do an art foundation course because A, if you did it before you were 19, it was free. And B, I think my career advisor and my family felt if I did a year of art and got it all out of my system, then maybe I'd want to go to uni to study something academic. So I got a place at Oxford Brooks, um, and I picked Oxford Brooks because A, it wasn't too far from home, it was only a couple of hours from where my parents lived, B, the course had a really good reputation, and C, I couldn't really afford uh, to live in London, so it, yeah, it was great. Our foundation was great because it was where I discovered what I really wanted to do. Um, so we did um, projects in all different areas of art and design. So we did projects in uh, illustration, graphic design, photography, animation. Um, and so it was great having all these different disciplines like explained to me and shown to me. And it was a real light bulb moment of like, oh, this is what I do is called. Uh, so in that sense, doing an art foundation was really invaluable. Uh, so by the end of my foundation year, I decided that I definitely didn't want to do anything academic at university. So I started looking around art schools that I could do a degree at. Um, so I looked around Bournemouth and Falmouth because they were down in the southwest, which is near where my parents live. And I also looked at Camberwell and Kingston in London. And I also looked at Norwich School of Art and Design, as it was then known. It's now called Norwich University of the Arts, or NUA. And I decided to go for NUA because at the time, the courses have changed slightly now, but at the time, if you did graphic design, you spent your first year um, doing projects in illustration, animation, photography, design for publishing and graphic design before specialising in one for your final two years. And I felt having just discovered these disciplines on my foundation course, I wanted more time to explore them before I decided which one to specialise in. And also looking around the London colleges, it was very much about like hot desking and only seeing your tutor once a term. And I just wanted more of a personal and sort of genuine experience, which is what I found at NUA. I really, really enjoyed my degree and I loved doing all the different design disciplines. And actually it's really hard to decide which one to specialise in. But I decided to specialise in illustration 
because I felt illustration had the broader spectrum of what it could be. So, you know, illustration can be something that's really hand-drawn, or it can be something that's generated by a computer, or it can be something that's really sculptural. It can literally be like anything you want it to be. And I've always jumped around using different techniques for different projects, and I felt I could do this uh, in illustration. I mean, looking back, I do sometimes wonder if I should have done graphics, just so that I'd be a bit better at using computer programs like InDesign and Illustrator. But on the whole, I'm really glad that I went for illustration. It wasn't actually till the end of my second year that I got introduced to printmaking by one of my illustration tutors who showed me her work and took me over to the printmaking department and I had started experimenting uh, with printmaking. Uh, I mean, I think what drew me, what I like most about the uh, printmaking is that there's a real process and craft to it. Um, you know, you have to go through lots of different stages of making your plate or making your screen before you actually get to the final product. And now that I'm older and I know a bit more about myself, I know that I'm a problem solver. And I think that's also what drew me uh, to printmaking, as it has this sort of problem solving element to it where you're trying to figure out the best way to print something and get the most out of the process. Um, so I do a lot of screen printing now, but weirdly, like I didn't actually, I did one screen print when I was at NUA. I actually spent most of my time doing holographs, and my final major project was a series of holographs made out of tape that were inspired by the Imperial War Museum. So I graduated from NUA and I was out in the big wide world and I felt I had three options. I could stay in Norwich, I could move back to my parents, or I could move somewhere else like London. Um, my parents live in the sticks and you had to drive like half an hour just to make a photocopy. Um, and London seemed quite expensive and I didn't really have the desire to like move anywhere else so I stayed in Norwich. Um, I'll be honest, I didn't really know what to do. I had a job in a pub that paid the bills and I'd befriended a local printmaker who let me use his press so I was able to carry on making holographs. Um, and I knew, you know, I was quite realistic. I knew I wasn't going to like make it overnight. You know, most of the illustrators I admired and looked up to and looking at their careers, you know, they didn't make it till they're in their 30s. So I was well aware that, you know, I wasn't suddenly going to be an illustrator. It was going to be like a long haul and that I would just have to keep going at it until I got to where I wanted to be. Um, so I decided to try and find a job that was sort of slightly creative, um, but also give me time to focus on my own creative practice. And I thought, hey, I'll be an art technician um, because in a school, because I thought well, I'll get the summer holidays um, to work on my own stuff. And also, you know, all the technicians I'd come across, whether it's at school or uni, were always really helpful to me. And I kind of wanted to give some of that back. Um, so I applied for a few art technician jobs and didn't even get an interview. And I was like, huh, how come, <laughs> how come I'm not getting any interviews? And I was like, well, I have zero experience of working in a school or even in any sort of supportive role like that. Um, so I just signed up to Arts Jobs, which is a newsletter for arts jobs run by the Arts Council, which is well worth signing up for, for jobs and opportunities. So I signed up for that and I saw on their jobs list that they had, um, there was opportunities to do internships at London Print Studio, which is a print studio in London. Uh, so I applied and got a place on the internship program. And that was, um, so that was for six months and it was two days a week. So, I mean, it was a bit crazy. I was still living in Norwich. I was still working in a pub till 2 a.m. And then I was getting up at 6 a.m. Uh, to get a train down to London to do this internship. Um, and it was really great. We got to, so the interns, uh, we worked a bit in the gallery helping put up shows. Um, and then we also did a bit of shadowing in the print uh, making studios. So we got to follow the technicians uh, around when they were doing open access or running courses. And we also got to um, work on the front desk and help out with admin. So we really got an all round experience of like what it was like uh, to work in an arts organization. And although, you know, it was a tough like six months and I was totally knackered, it paid off. Um, because after that I got a job as an art technician in the school <laughs> um, and that job was great and I learned a lot but it was only for um, a year because it was maternity cover and after that I managed to get a job working at City College as a support worker uh, so I helped students in art and design lessons who had additional needs and that was a great job in the sense that as part of the job, I got trained in a lot of things. I got health and safety training, I got DBS checked, I got to do some basic teaching tr teacher training. So that really helped me uh, with developing my own teaching practice and the courses that I now teach here at Print to the People. And from working at City College, I then got a job as the evening printmaking technician back at NUA. 
Uh, and that was a part-time job, so just in the evenings, just during term time, which was great because I, that job sort of paid my bills, uh, which then meant in the rest of the time I could focus on um, doing my own creative practice. So I did that job uh, for 10 years, and so a couple of years ago I quit that uh, to go full-time freelance um, because it just felt like it was the right time to do that. I had quite a lot going on with my own practice, and yeah, it just felt like the right time to make that jump. Um, so in terms of setting up Print to the People, uh, to jump back to when I graduated, so alongside the jobs I was doing, working at the school, then at City College, and then at NUA, I was always working on my own practice. Um, after finishing my internship at London Print Studio, I was like, why can't there be somewhere like this in Norwich? So I was pretty inspired, and I wanted to carry on screen printing, but there wasn't any way you could do that in Norwich. So I had this idea in my head that I was going to find a space and set up like a small screen printing studio, um, and I was just sort of asking around different artists I knew and this new studio space had just opened up called Stew Gallery and Artist Studio which has sadly since uh, closed. But anyway, they just opened up and they were having an open day so I went along and I spoke to Kev, uh, one of the organisers and I said that I was looking for a space to set up a print studio in and he was like, well, we have two spare rooms that we were thinking of sitting up a print studio in but we don't know anything about printmaking. And so I went along to this meeting they were having to discuss the print studios and there were all these people who wanted to get involved there. And so at the first meeting there was 10 people and we kind of discussed different things and then we set a date for another meeting. And at the next meeting there was only two people, which was myself and Vicky, who I ended up setting up Print of the People with. Um, so that's how we started working together. I didn't know Vicky at the time, but she'd done her foundation course in Norwich and then she'd moved to Nottingham to do her degree in textiles and so she'd just moved back to Norwich, which is when we met. And so that was great because she was able to teach me about screen printing on textiles, which I didn't know anything about, and I was able to teach her about screen printing on paper, which she didn't know anything about. Um, so we started working together and we ended up setting up what was called Stew Print Rooms. Basically every moment we had outside of our jobs, we were painting things, we were down at the studios trying to tidy up the rooms because they were in a bit of a state. We were looking on the internet for like secondhand equipment or free bits of equipment. We were like rummaging in skips or we were trying to work out the sort of how we'd run this facility. And eventually, piece by piece, we got uh, these two rooms up and running. So we had two rooms at the front of the building. Uh, one was for paper printing and one was for textile printing. And I mean, kind of selfishly, our main drive in getting the rooms up and running was that we wanted to have somewhere we can make our own work, uh, but setting them up, like going through the process of setting them up, we realised that things would work better if they had more of a sort of co-op open access feel. So by lots of people using the space, we could buy equipment and materials in bulk and it would be sort of cheaper all round. And yeah, by other people using the space, we could also, you know, upgrade our equipment and expand what we were doing and buy more bits of equipment. Um, so yeah, we got the room set up and then we were kind of having a brainstorming session in a pub, as we did back then, um, about how we were going to let people know about the print rooms because we didn't have any money for like advertising or any budget um, left after getting them set up. And we thought um, we'd found this old cleaning trolley in a skip. So we thought we'd load up all our screen print equipment on this um, trolley. And we wheeled it down to Norwich Arts Centre where they were having a Clutter City market. We had asked them if we could do this and they said it was okay. And so we set up a little print set up in the garden and we were just doing like live screen printing and we had lots of people come and talk to us and we told them what we were doing. Um, and yeah, so that's where sort of print to the people came from because the name, because we were literally taking printing to the people. And so things just sort of grew from there. So at the thing we did at the Arts Centre, a lady called Shell saw us, who runs Norwich Pride. So she asked if we'd come do live screen printing at Norwich Pride, which we did. And then at Norwich Pride, someone else saw us, and we ended up going to Latitude Festival to do live screen printing. And people were just inquiring about doing workshops and whether we could come into schools and all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so it just grew quite naturally from there. So Vicky and I never really had a plan beyond getting the print rooms set up. So it was great that things grew naturally and by word of mouth, but it was also a bit of a steep learning curve that suddenly we were having to work out like fees and contracts and how to teach screen printing to 10 year olds. And although we were making a bit of money for it, you know, we still had our um, like real jobs on the side. So it was a bit of a juggling act and it was hard work, but we made it work because it was what we really wanted to do. Uh, so things grew steadily for us being based at Stu for the next few years, uh, but we've always been asked to kind of do more stuff which we couldn't do at Stu. So, you know, can you do lino? Uh, can I come and do etching? 
you know, we're asking to cater for bigger school groups and we just couldn't fit um, at Stu. So we were started looking for a new building which we could expand into. And it took us about a year and a half and we found this building which we're now in on Pitt Street. And we've been here for six years now. Uh, moving was quite a lot of effort because we've got some big bits of kit. But now we're here, um, you know, we've been able to expand. So we, now we do letterpress, lino, etching. So we've expanded to do other processes. And we've been really been able to, like, settle as an organisation and find our rhythm. So our next challenge is going to be to find a sort of permanent home for printed people. So we rent the building we're in at the minute and it's in the Anglia Square uh, development area. So if that gets the go ahead, we'd have to move out because they'd flatten it and build flats. So that's kind of our next challenge um, as an organisation which we're working on right now. That takes us up to date in terms of my career. Um, if I was to sum it up into some bite-sized bits of advice, I'd maybe say, uh, you know, just get out there and do it yourself. Uh, if there's a gap where you think something should be and there isn't anything there or you think there should be something happening that isn't you know just do it yourself um i know that sounds sort of easier said than done especially if you're on your own but by getting out there and talking to people and finding out what's going on in your area these interactions opportunities will arise from them in my experience people in the creative industry are more than happy to like help each other and collaborate you know, print to the people wouldn't be where it is today without the help and collaboration of lots of people from our local area you know helping a lot helping a little supporting us in lots of different ways so really do like get out there and find out what's going on in your local and sort of national community to finish i think i'd just say that you really do have to stick at it if there's something you really believe that you want to do uh, my career has had lots of highs and lows times where i've like really wanted to give up and just get like a normal job but you know, something's driven me to like stick at it and, you know, I'm here today managing to make like a full time uh, career from being a freelance artist. So, yeah, just stick with it. So uh, thank you for watching. I hope it was useful to find out a bit more about uh, my career and life. If you want to find out more about Print to the People, how we work as an organisation and also some tips on funding, please watch uh, my next video. And uh, these videos are free to watch, but if you feel like donating something, please go to our website where there's a donate button or, you know, head over to our Etsy shop and buy yourself a little something printed that's lovely. Um, these videos have been made possible thanks to Arts Council emergency funding. So we just want to say a big thanks to all the national lottery players out there for making these things happen.